Hi again, here we are to continue our discussion of SpriteKit, and here's another short tutorial. Um, in the last tutorial, we set up our scene and we created some subclasses of SK Sprite Node to represent the player and the ground. And what we'd like to do is set up some physics today. And I'm going to go into physics in more detail later, but for right now, we'll just get some basic physics concepts started, right? So what I want to do is create a game that'll be sort of like, you know, Jetpack Joyride or some other endless runner game. And essentially this object will be a player and it will land on the ground and we can tap and our player can fly or jump, right? Okay, so there's our player there. And we're going to use physics to make this happen. You can do this other ways too, but physics makes it pretty easy to, to work with, right? Um, <clears throat> so quickly, what is physics? Well, physics in SpriteKit is based on Box2D, which is a, um, a library that was written in C, and it's used in a lot of, a lot of other um, projects. Um, essentially, imagine that there is a whole nother system somewhere. You know, it's all mathematical, it's all in software, there's no visible objects in it. And in that system, it's a simulation of physics, you know, objects in the real world, right? So boxes and circles, you know, kind of bouncing off each other, right? And what we do is we assign sprite objects to the objects in the simulation. And when the simulation runs, it determines where those objects end up. So if they run into each other or they bump into something or they fall, the gravity pulls them down or something. Um, when the simulation is done, the simulation assigns the X and Y properties of the, of the imaginary physics bodies to the sprite objects on the screen. Okay. Um, that was kind of a really quick and not that great explanation, but anyway, you, you'll see how it works in a moment, right? So in SpriteKit, what we need to do is um, anytime we have a, a sprite or other object on the screen, we need to give it an SK physics body, okay? And the body describes what the object looks like in the physics simulation. And the body in the physics simulation doesn't have to look like the shape of the object here on the screen, okay? So this could be a circle, it could be a smaller box than the box that is drawn here, or it could be any shape, okay? Um, for the simulations here, we're gonna just use uh, rectangles, that'll be easiest. Essentially, actually, the, the circle is like the most efficient object. So if you wanna be efficient, you can give everything a circular outline, okay? So anyway, how does it work? Well, for us, since we have these subclasses, we can add our physics body in the subclass, and that kind of cleans up our game scene, right? We don't have to do as much work here, right? So we'll go to player first. And what we're gonna do is, I'm, I've got my init here, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to make a setup method. So I'll type in setup here, and then I'll define the setup function down here. Oops, let me spell that right. There we go, mark. Setup. You'll notice in the last couple of videos, um, and in this video, I've been typing, you know, this comment that says mark colon with the dash. I do that because um, in Xcode, the the mark shows up on the menu here. So if you click on the menu, you'll see the name that is in the mark. So here's in it, and there's setup. And if you put a little dash here, you get the line. So if you leave the dash out, you can see that now this one doesn't have a line above it, right? So I like to put a line there and it kind of puts a divider. So all my initializers are here and then all my setup stuff will be down here, right? Okay, so now let's add the function setup. And there we go, right? So now we'll initialize our, our player, you know, object. We'll, you know, set its size and call the designated initializer. So we set up the SK Sprite superclass correctly. And then we'll call setup here and we'll add any additional stuff that we need to do to set up the player sprite. So what are we gonna do then? So like I said, we're gonna set up physics first. So every sprite object has a physics body as a, you know, a class property. Okay, so this belongs to um, SK sprite node. So we can see it here, right? And you can see it's an optional. So, you know, an object doesn't have to have a physics body. It might have one, right? Might not. So, um, so that shows up as an optional. And so we'll, we'll set the physics body here. So I'll just type physics body and then I'll set it equal to SK physics body. So to make a physics body, we, we're going to call SK physics body and then we can call it with one of these initializers. And these pretty much just describe like how the body is shaped, right? So we can say physics body with a, 
list of physics bodies, so you can combine them all together in sort of a group. You can make a circle with a radius. You can make a circle with a radius with the center in some other location. You can uh, make it an edge chain. This is sort of a shape, like a, imagine like a line or a piece of wire, right? Um, you can make a, a edge chain from a point, um, edge loop from a path, a polygon. Down here, you can see we have rectangle of size, right? So this one is the one I'm going to use here because my box is a rectangle, and so I'll just make it match the size of the box. Okay, so for the rectangle of size, we have to say what size it's going to be, and every um, sprite node also has, or SK sprite node has a size property. So I'll just get the class property of size and use that. So, you know, the physics body will be the same size as my sprite, okay? So, uh, so there we go. So we got that. Um, let's do the same thing for ground. We're going to have to do a little more work here, but just to illustrate the idea of physics, I'll just start with, the, with just the body, right? So in here, I'll do the same thing. I'm in ground, then I'll go to setup. I'll say physics body equals SK physics body, and then we'll do rectangle of size, and we'll set that to the size of, of the sprite. Now, this example isn't going to exactly work the way that we want it to. Um, I'm going to test it first, though, and we'll see what happens, right? Oh, so there we see our our object and it falls through the screen there. Actually, I was expecting the ground to fall and I realized I forgot to call setup. Like I did setup here, but I actually didn't call it, right? So let's include that here. So we'll call setup and then we'll test it again. And then you'll see both objects will just fall down the screen, right? So there they go. Gravity pulls them down, right? So in the physics world, there's just a default gravity set and if you know, if gravity affects things, they just fall, right? So what we'd like to do is we'd like the ground to act as a solid object and the player to act as a dynamic object, okay? So for the player, it's doing everything that we want it to do right now, so we can leave that alone. For ground, though, um, what I want to do is I want to set some properties on the physics body. Now, anytime you want to change the the you know, physical quality of your physics object, right? You're always going to set those properties on the physics body, okay? Um, remember, the physics body is in the simulation, and we're determining, like, how this interacts with other objects in the simulation, right? So we'll say physics body dot dynamic, okay? So bodies that are dynamic are like the player object, and gravity affects them, and they can bump into other objects, and they can get knocked around, um, Static objects have a dynamic property of false, okay? So by default, everybody's dynamic, and it's dynamic true, right? And if you have dynamic false, then it's a static object. And you can think of static objects in the real world as being objects like the floor or the wall, okay, or solid objects that don't move like the ground, okay? So our player is going to be a dynamic object, and the ground will be a static object, right? So I'll set this to false. You'll notice that since... The physics body right here is an optional. When we set it, by default, um, Xcode wants to put the, the question mark here. And what this does is if there isn't a physics body set, like if this is nil, then the rest of this line doesn't happen. I kind of think that this is in habit, I, or in practice, I've kind of found that this actually is a little bit dangerous because sometimes you think you're setting a value here, but it turns out that the physics body failed for some reason and you didn't create your physics body and then these other settings don't work and then you're wondering why and you're not getting an error. So I like to use the, the exclamation point here. And what this does is it says, hey, let's unwrap this optional, right? And that may seem a little unsafe, but for me, I find that this is good because I immediately get an error if there's a problem with the physics body. And if I don't have a problem with the physics body, then all of this stuff after that acts on the physics body will, will work correctly, right? So this just gives me an error if there is a problem here, and I want to know that there is a problem if there is one, right? So I, I like to do this. So anyway, there we go. Now let's see what happens, right? We'll test it again. Oh, there we go, right? So now our player falls down and it stops at the floor. So that's working pretty good, and that should get us started with physics. So I'll just stop this one here, and we're going to go over physics later, and uh, we'll talk more about it. There's a, there's a lot more to do, right? So anyway, that gets us started there, and you can see that um, using classes here, we can store 
all of the features of this particular object within the class file, and that kind of keeps our code organized. So everything here will, you know, affect the player, and everything here will affect the ground. And then when I want to set up player and ground, I don't have to worry about setting all those extra properties. I can just create a player and create a ground in game scene, right? So subclassing is kind of helping us out right now, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that's informative.